Hello, here's an elevator simulator written in JavaScript using the P5.js library for 3D graphics. You can see it's got several floors and several cars. There are people moving around, up and down indicators. The numbers above the people tell where they want to go. You can control the speed of the cars. You can change the view. Here's the side view. Here's the view controlled by the mouse. There are even some details like the cables and the counterweights. Um, there's sound. I'll turn the sound on for a little while. You might not like it. The cars, the sounds of the cars, they're pretty low. I think uh, they started. 30 or 40 hertz. The lower limit of human hearing is about 20 hertz. Okay, you've heard the sound, so I'm going to turn that off for the rest of this. There are two projection types. There's the perspective projection, where things that are closer to you appear bigger. And if something is above you, you would see the bottom of it. If you're above it, you see the top of it. I'm going to switch to the orthographic projection and notice the difference. You can, um, well, I guess I'll show you really fast elevators. So you'll see it. There they go. And maybe I'll turn the sound on so you can hear that. The elevators. They accelerate, they travel at the maximum speed, and then they decelerate. And the pitch of the oscillators goes along with, uh, with that. Um, and there's super slow, so we'll get one going super slow. There they go. And then I'll put it back to somewhere in the middle. Um, here you see how many people are waiting. One, two, three. Uh, how many are riding, how many have been served. And finally, I'll show you um, increasing the load a little bit. So this will be heavy. And if you really want to <laughs> have some fun, you can set it to insane. And then that's when, <laughs> that's when the people really get in there. There's a, over 100 waiting, 167 riding. I've seen as many as like 600 riding. Uh, there's no limit to the volume of, of riders that you can have on a car. All right, let's put it to, to light and let it uh, recover a little bit. Um, then we'll look at the code. Um, okay, there is an index.html file. And it brings in, I'm looking for this, the sketch.js as a module. So we'll start there, sketch.js. Um, let's do this. And you see it imports other pieces. Controls is user interface controls. Building draws the floors. The dispatcher calls the cars for the would-be riders. Uh, the car draws the cars and moves the cars. Stats manages these statistics here. Um, so let's go through some of this. There's a lot of code. This will be kind of an overview video, and then I might go into more details about the various parts later. Um, <clears throat> uh, what do we look at first? There are settings. So a lot of things in here are adjustable. The number of cars is adjustable. The geometry of things is adjustable. The default elevator speed, default view. Um, so we create the settings. And here's a function that figures out the Y coordinate of each floor. Here we create controls, um, the cars, the building, statistics, the dispatcher. And now you see some P5.js stuff. In preload, we load a sound that's the ding sound when the when the car doors open. 
And in setup, we create the canvas, calculate the number of floors, create the, what I call the knobs, which is really these user interface controls. Um, a little custom function to make it easier to use push and pop. Something for rotating on Y. This shows the rider stats. You see, you recognize some of this DOM manipulation code. Gets the rider counts um, HTML element from here and then sets the content to waiting colon and then um, the waiting value and so on. Um, this code sets up the camera, sets up the perspective to orthographic, uh, sorry, the projection to orthographic or perspective and sets the camera position based on the average height of the cars. There's a little map and reduce to, to compute the average um, car Y positions. Here's the draw function. I deliberately kept it short and put a lot of the code elsewhere. Oh, this is not very interesting. Let's have this um, vary. <clears throat> the varying, varying here just changes the load over time on a sine wave pattern. Okay, back to draw here. We show the rider stats here. We clear the background, set up the camera, rotate on Y. The rotate on Y is um, for this. And then in quadrant one is, uh, is a function that just um, anything in here will have the origin uh, move to a more convenient location. In P5JS, in 3D mode, the origin is at the center, which is not really convenient for this. So this in quadrant one moves the origin down to the bottom left and also corrects um, the Y axis direction so that things go up as the Y value increases. So with that, with those transformations, then uh, for each car, we update the car and draw the car. Then we draw the floors and then we call the dispatcher to process things. That's the main, main loop right here. Uh, here's the in quadrant thing I talked about. Okay, so that's the high level. Maybe I'll pick one other part and um, we'll look at it in detail. And I think probably the car would be the next best thing to look at, the thing to look at next. Um, okay, why don't we get an outline view of it here. So here's an outline of the code. This is gonna be too small to read probably, but We've got functions in here that uh, to do a draw. There's draw, and it draws rails, draws the cables and counterweight. So the rails are these, a uh, little hard to see, but the cars don't just hang and swing like a pendulum. They go through these guides. That's these rails, these four lines. Um, and then the cables and counterweight, the three cables per car, they go wrap around in a imaginary pulley up here and then connect to a counterweight. Here's a counterweight for this car. Um, okay, so draw rails. I think maybe I won't go into a lot of detail on that. Some geometry stuff. Eventually there's um, a loop within a loop and ultimately a call to box. So those, those rails are not lines. They are um, rectangular prisms. They're just in the shape of almost like um, with no thickness. Okay, that's draw rails. Here's draw cables and counterweight. Um, P5JS code, translate box. Here's draw cables. There are three cables for each car. That's kind of what this loop is setting up. Translate box. This draws the car. So the car, the stroke color of the car is silver. The fill color is this, uh, this kind of gray. And then it's halfway transparent. Um, I made things somewhat transparent so you can see, so that they don't block things that are behind them. So you can see it better. And the car is drawn with a box again, rectangular prism, and then it calls draw doors. So let's go to draw doors next. This is draw doors. 
There, this is a little bit complicated because they open and close. So you see some that's open, that's closing. And there's just one, um, there's a translate here and then a box that draws one door, but it's in this loop, so it draws both doors. What else? Um, update. Uh, so we have a state machine here. We're in one of these various states. So we're, the car is either idle or moving or with opening doors or with open doors or with closing doors. And um, there are transitions among these states. I need to make this a little bit wider so we can see this better. You can still see some of it. Uh, what do I want to talk about here? The car starts out in the idle state and it runs this code, this idle code, mm, needs to be wider still. So let's do that. Um, not, I'll just skim over a few things. There's, a, there's just too much to talk about in a video that's not super long. Um, some code about, um, well, there's this, this test floors array, which is where the car is wanted to go. And if, if it has a non-zero length, then we find where to go. And um, cars are either going up or going down, and so we find the next one going up or down, depending on which way we're going. And if we don't find one, then we just take the next one that's there. Um, what else is in here? Bit of code for the maximum speed, acceleration, things like that. Okay, so here's, a, here's the move function that does the moving. Um, there are, I'm using the, from physics, the, um, kinematic equations that help you find where something is over time, given, um, a certain acceleration. Uh, let's see. Here's a function that tells whether the car is decelerating. So it's either it's either idle and that's not moving, the doors are opening or closing, or it's climbing or descending, and then it's either accelerating or traveling at the maximum speed or decelerating. So those are some of the things that are going on here. Um, okay, I think I'll stop there for now, maybe talk more about it later. Um, so I'll leave you with the final picture of the elevator simulator. Maybe I'll put it on uh, insane. The source code is on GitHub. You can follow this link. Here's the elevator simulator at davebsoft.com. You can go to the software page there and then the elevator sim link from there. Um, it's open source. Maybe other people will want to add features. Some of my students have ideas like uh, having some mishaps, uh, cars fail, uh, people with baby strollers. Um, it definitely needs some other features like to not allow, look at all these people, we need to wait and watch them all get on this car, uh, to not allow, <laughs> there are 310 people waiting right now, not allow more, look, watch them go in now. They, they went into that car. <laughs> all right, well, have fun with the elevator simulator. So long.